hello and welcome to episode number five of the art department podcast um, it's again Emmanuel Shu here with me and myself Jan Urschel of course and today we're going to talk about uh, salaries rates negotiation and everything that goes into being paid as a concept artist um, we have we always ask them um, questions like, um, oh, I'm, I'm young and I don't have any savings. What should I do? How, how do I get paid a fair rate? What is a fair rate even? We're going to get to all these questions and we want to kind of share some experiences from our past because we didn't start out getting paid a lot of money. I mean, we're still not getting paid a lot of money, but um, <laughs> yeah, I don't think, and nobody ever gets started yeah, out we're, we're, getting paid a lot. Yeah, we're not, we're not getting, we're not rich yet. We don't have a, we don't have our Bentleys in our garage. But um, we started all, I think, from very humble beginnings, and um, like everybody, I think. So we wanted to kind yeah, what, of. What was your I start? Started, yeah, yeah um, I mean, I started as a self-taught graphic designer, and. And that was uh, because I, I got a I got a copy of Photoshop like everybody else, and um, I started I started web designing in front page Microsoft front page, fantastic. Oh my god, front. Yeah. I think it was. It, <laughs> I haven't heard that oh, in a long time. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's uh, luckily it's dead, um, and should yeah. not be revived. And it's it it was basically like I think because the internet came up. Um, the internet was was in the mid '90s. Everybody got finally internet, and so did I. So I started to um, dabble around with with uh, just making web design, right? Making web pages because it was cool. Uh, it were horrible websites I made for no other purpose than like, hey, that's me. Look at me, and I. That's the movies I like to watch, and all the kind of things mm -hmm. like GeoCities kind of thing, right? Yeah, 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 um, yeah. And uh, that, that led me into Photoshop. And then I, I learned Photoshop only to make websites, not to do anything else with it. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. then I got hired uh, out of high school into um, just when I was starting college. Uh, I was hired uh, by a little agency, marketing agency that was mainly working in the online space. And that was shortly after the dot com bust. So there wasn't there wasn't a lot of money to go around. Right. All <laughs> the excitement kind of uh, was already out mm -hmm. the window. Um, but they kind of uh, managed to survive thanks to a lot of different factors. But anyway, so I got hired as kind of like a part-timer uh, student kind of guy, which I was very happy about because, you know, other people were kind of waiting tables and, 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 and doing whatever, cleaning uh, toilets. I have no idea. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I was lucky enough to, to, to get myself in, 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 in the door there. Um, and working on, on little websites and, and basically like pushing pixels around, making buttons. And I, I earned mm -hmm. maybe like this, this was a full time job. It was it was part time, but it was it was paid by the hour. But and I could basically mm -hmm. come as as much as work was there, which kind of ranged from like full time in like the semester holidays in college to like part time during the semester. And um, I made like, I don't know, like eight, eight, nine euros per hour. Um, oh, wow. And uh, yeah, so um, that kind of, I mean, that kind of led me. Well, how long ago was this? That was in 2000. Yeah, 2000, 2001. Okay, so that's when I got started. 20 years ago. Yeah, okay. and um, yeah, and that, that, that didn't amount to much. That was like a, basically on average, like a few hundred euros a month that I could earn, which was, which was fine. I could pay my rent of the little place I was living in. Uh, I could pay for transportation. And I mean, I, I was mm -hmm. I was eating at the student cafeteria anyways. So that was like dirt cheap where you can okay. get like a meal for like two, mm. three euros a day. Um, and, and and that's all I really had. Um, I I was able to buy my first Wacom then. Um, like the, mm -hmm. like, it was the Intuos 2, like the, the tiny one. It was like this big. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, 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 um, yeah, yeah. So... Was the beige one, oh, right? Yeah, it, it stained horrible. Was it the beige one? I think one? it was beige or like really light gray. It it did it looked different yeah, yeah, from was, the it's... from the Intuos three. Um, oh no, because I I come from the the beige one where the pen is literally looks like a pencil. Is it like still it's attached like really to the thin. wire? Was it that one? Oh, no, 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 not, not that. <laughs> not that old. Yeah, but so that, that that's the first one I bought like in two thousand one or whatever. I I didn't really know what to do with it. But I thought like, hey, that's pretty cool. And I, I drew websites with a pencil. 
with uh, I don't know in Photoshop. That was that was cool, pretty cool. Re remarkable. And then, um, yeah, and then it, that's kind of how it evolved from there. It, it took a long time because at the same time I was studying I, and I didn't take the the graphic design as like this is my calling, this is my thing that I want to do until I die kind of uh, attitude. It was more like okay, this this is fun to do and it, it it's an easier it's it's an easy job and it's it's better than waiting tables and so i wasn't really after like uh, okay i should really push for like crazy rates or whatever i got pay increases over the years but nothing dramatically different until i graduated and then moved to singapore and was working for um a company in the i was a graphic designer still but I was kind of like part of a small marketing team within a financial mm. services company. Um, so I, I was pretty much like maybe like two creatives were in that company and trying to, again, rebuild like uh, the website um, there. And then I, I, got a, I got a more decent salary that was, I mean, good for a junior, um, but kind of outside the range of what you would be able to earn i think in singapore if you are uh, purely working at a like entertainment focused company because it was after all in the finance industry right so um i think as a junior there i was able to but that was your like first career that was like right, basically basically the first full-time job with like a monthly salary and benefits and that kind of stuff like before when i was working in, in Germany, I, I mean, there, there were no benefits. There was like a, a certain amount of um, um, health insurance, like uh, un because we have universal health care. Uh, there was a small amount that ga that got away for um, for for that, and then a little bit of taxes. But mm. basically, my income bracket was so low that it was basically like, I mean, we can't charge this guy any taxes because he's not making any money anyway. Mm -hmm. So. Um, but yeah, it was quite a big boost from like a few hundred euros a month to like a few thousand um, for for my first job, and um, mm. and uh, yeah, that's kind of the the, the way I got in. And then, but that was the yeah. that was the graphic design. That was stuff. graphic design stuff, yeah. And then you went back to study. Yeah, that's, right? to... went back to study. Um, my income. So you had to start all over. Yeah, again. My, my income <laughs> dropped dropped to zero. Um, of course, during the studying, it cost a lot of money. Like um, a, a year studying at FCD will cost you fifty thousand um, dollars, fifty thousand oh, wow. Singapore dollars. Is that the full program? That's it's, like that's finished? a one year full program. Yeah, yeah. They, okay. I think now okay. they have like advanced levels that cost again if you want to take it after you finish. But no, I don't know. I'm not too familiar with that. Um, and then basically mm. at, at age like 29 or whatever, I, I started in a junior position at Lucasfilm um, in, in Singapore. Lucasfilm. Um, Singapore. Okay. Yeah. And th so basically I had to start like again from zero. And the, the uh, how did you get that um, job? Through hard work and timing. It's pure luck. So it was like, um, because uh, I was graduating um, at um, basically, I mean, the, the teachers had the confidence that I was, I could, I could be kind of like the first, like at the grad show, I had like the biggest panel of like work to be shown. And it was right in the beginning, mm. it like right, at, right next to the entrance. So the first, when, when people first come in, they would see my stuff. So in that sense, I mm. was lucky because I, I, I worked a lot and, and came kind of out on, on, on top of the class. Um, and um, so that was already kind of like the, the most eye-catching thing. And luckily that time, um, the executive producer of, of the Lucas Arts um, subs, uh, subsidiary came as well. And um, if another producer's friend was actually studying with me and he was a good friend of mine. And uh, my friend didn't want to stay in Singapore. So he was like, hey, why don't you talk to Jan uh, instead of myself? And then it just so happened, like it, nothing happened for quite a while. I was bugging them like all the time, like, like, mm -hmm. like, uh, like, can we meet like uh, for like two months? Nothing really happened. I was like, hey, yeah, let's talk soon. I had an interview, but nothing came out of that in the end um, with Lucasfilm. They were kind of like taking it easy. But then I kept on bugging them. And then I think the executive producer at one point really just responded because he was so annoyed by me. He was like, okay, 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 let's, let's, let's talk more. And it just happened that I think two weeks before another guy left. 
and so I could take his position. So it was a mix. You know, that's a, that's actually a good thing to to, to segue into just a little yeah. bit. Uh, you know, how annoying is annoying? <laughs> like, no, I mean, you know, Truth. like what is because that 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 is, you know, a common like I, I I've certainly been like that. But wh where do we draw the line when it comes to this kind of calling? Right. Right. You know, after you've interviewed or you talked to the person, what do you think? It's a good question. It's a good question. Um, I mean, at, at all times you need to you need to preserve a certain etiquette. I think um, you need to always be polite. Um, always have a proper way of of writing an email. Like uh, it needs to be mm. no slang, professional. professional yeah. Like with you address the person you're talking to, um, and and finish off just like you would do any letter you're writing i mean uh, people don't write letters anymore right so that kind of gets lost <laughs> right but you have to you have to observe i think a certain etiquette of professionalism and i mean always i mean i always try that there's a, a decent amount of time that has passed between um the earlier point of contact like don't write an email like every week um like that that's really not okay right i mean back then there was kind of there was kind of like a, a certain anticipation and they needed they they knew on the other side there needed to be an answer to myself because we had uh, th there was a there was already a history of like yeah we're going to do this and we had the interview so it was a necessary next step to confirm the employment and all these kind of things but i mean it, it it's 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 tricky though right because you're waiting for an answer and every day feels like a week and um, you have other options on the table, but you really want to go for that one. Um, and they can't get their act together because they're busy, they're traveling, they're on business trips, all these kind of things, right? So yeah, it's, it's, mm -hmm. you, it's kind of like you have to think about it yourself, like how, of, like how often do you want to be contacted by, by, by people? Like, does it, would, would it annoy you if you get an email every other day? Probably, right? But if it's like a reasonable request within like every two weeks, every fortnight or whatever, if it's, if it's like an urgent thing, um, then I think um, that's okay. Right. Um, but I mean, if you talk about like now, like how often should you maybe check in with a client? Like if they have new work available, I think that totally depends on like how, like how long product cycles are these days. Right. It's, it's, it's probably not, reasonable to expect that your art director is going to work on a different project every year yeah yeah right? no no of so course but I, I also think that uh you know like i'm it's interesting to hear that because i think everybody's going to have a little bit of a different answer yeah. uh to that question but i mean personally i think it's 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 a really fine yeah. line but the only rules that you can really follow is writing a very effective and straightforward professional yeah. email but i will also say that i tended to be one of those <laughs> email too much oh, really? people but the one thing i found with that is and i, I learned to adjust mm. it as i went but i found that uh they remembered me that's interesting yeah and and but but i would structure it like almost like talking depending on who you're talking to you're talking to a recruiter trying to find out how to maybe be a little bit more personal. Mm -hmm. uh, but instead of writing email back then, it was, I would be calling oh, and this was ILM right, right, right. and I'd be calling and going, Hey, so, you know, so, and I know that that was, I was doing a weekly call, but it got to the point where she remembered me by my voice. Yeah, she's like picking up the phone. It's like, Oh, this guy again. <laughs> yeah. But the thing is we started just having really like cordial conversation nice, nice. and then, and then uh, maybe three months passed and she remembered me mm. and she forwarded my stuff. Nice. But if I didn't do that, mm. she wouldn't have done yeah. that. So it's a, it's a fine line. Yeah, that's true. Um, that's true. But be aware, be aware mm. that you can come off as being too annoying. But I don't, I think that if you are respectful, yeah, that's good. number yeah. one, and number two, don't blast email, like mass oh, yeah, emails. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what, but you know, a lot of people do oh, that. Yeah. Uh, like, like a lot of people, at, like they'll email me for, you know, anything from like mentoring mm -hmm. or something. But you know that that's an email they copy yeah, and paste yeah, it to yeah. everybody. 
it has to be personal. automatically yeah. you're like i don't i don't want yeah it. no definitely definitely <laughs> be, be, yeah. you, you know they don't care about the answer they, they just take whatever is the lowest offer they just go fishing right um and see mm -hmm. whoever whoever bites the bait right um that's right, right. that's very true but i mean how like for you it was maybe a bit different than than mine because my 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 way into the industry was was kind of uh, all over the place but um for you like how how did you get started and in, in which um, in which industry really and and if you can share some numbers from from what you got back then and which year that would yeah, be really nice I, to hear yeah so for me uh i started in the still the entertainment right. industry but i did a lot of different roles so my first job was you know again timing like you yeah. And, you know, I just got lucky. I went to the counselor's office at school and they said, hey, we have this multimedia thing. Uh, you know, at that time, people were like, I, what's multimedia? I don't know. So they sent me to have an interview. And and it just so happened that, you know, then this is the personal factor is I went in there with floppy disks, three floppy disks. <laughs> that was my portfolio was in three floppy disks. They looked at my work. It was kind of just you know, okay. Yeah. I barely knew the software. Uh, but I was a, a race car driver oh, right, right. and, and the owner was an ex race car designer. Nice. So we just started talking about design right. and driving and racing and all this stuff. And before you know, it was like an hour in and the, uh, the person who was actually interviewing me, <laughs> like the, the, the 3d person was not even really in the conversation. You just shut him out. <laughs> Yeah, and and in the end, uh, they offered me the job on the spot, yeah. and and that that person, uh, the the 3D artist, uh, my my, basically the person who who would be my you know my direct supervisor, told me a year later that he had no clue whether I was going to work out. Nice, nice. Like, it was just like a, a crapshoot, but the personality came yeah, out, yeah. and they they just felt, hey, you know we. You know, at the very least, we won't have a bad time working yeah, with them. That's true. <laughs> yeah, so much so, so much depends though on, on personality and, and timing and, and um yeah, and that, that you can't you can't ignore that, right? But yeah, please go ahead. No, no. No, I and and I think I think uh, I think that's a big one. Uh, because if you are a nice person, now you can be introverted mm -hmm. and still be really yeah. nice and people can see that and and, and you know, because I, back then I was actually really extroverted okay. uh, and it was very easy for me to talk to people and interview, but not everybody's going to have that. Right. And there are other ways for those people. But for my job uh, on, on that one, so I got it nice. and, you know, that was great. And then there was the ILM story I just right. told you pretty much right. <laughs> that, you know, I just kept bugging, right, bugging, right. bugging, bugging. And then my first job was uh, 600 bucks a week. 600, yeah, yeah. And I, and and he he told me it's six hundred bucks a week, and I accepted it right on the spot. And then he and then he he said to me, "Why don't you go home and think about it?" I'm like, "No, I can't think about it. That's uh, it. It's my first job. I'm doing it." Um, and you know, it wasn't. It was you know, it was obviously pretty low yeah, rate, yeah, yeah. but uh, but I I just thought, okay, you know, I I was just so excited at getting a job. I didn't care. Right, right, right. I had no. I didn't know what was what. You know, exactly. and and then as I went, you know, I, I would be, you know, I went to Lucas Learning, then the ranch to work on episode right. one, then ILM uh, and and ILM obviously was the story of calling the recruiter right. <laughs> like every right. week, like, hey, so, you know, and then talking to people. But I'll tell you, every job was just really meeting people like at ILM. I also met before I went to ILM, I met uh, the model supervisor named Jeff Campbell. And, you know, we had lunches, you know, because my uh, friend introduced mm -hmm. me. And so we had lunches and we got to know each other a little bit. And then when my demo reel came across his desk, he he's, oh, I know this guy. And then so it was already, right, right, you know, right. and then the recruiter knew to put my reel in front of his desk. So it all kind of worked out like that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then so, you know, from that, it went to, you know, just main, mainly like companies. Right. So each company, I would say uh, I would uh, I would jump from, you know, modeling, texturing, matte painting and then concept art. But each one is just a, a little bit more of a 
it's very straightforward negotiation, right? right? Okay, here's what I need. Here's my benefits, all that. And then freelance was when I really started getting into the whole, <laughs> you know, like, because, you know, you know, as well as I do, every job is a little different. Right. The nature of the job is a little different. And and then when do you give yourself a raise? Yeah, yeah <laughs> you know, yeah. all that. <laughs> That's just really interesting, right? Because, like, do you ever think about that? Like, when, you know, because when I'm freelancing now, you know, I think, oh, well, it's time to up the rate a little yeah, bit. Yeah, <laughs> it's true. It's true. Um, I I think I, I notice it not all the time, but at, at certain, usually it's triggered when I when I hear what other people earn. <laughs> and I was like, wait a minute, I have been on this rate for like four years now. I think it's time I, I up it a little bit, right? Um, and then and then you try here and there to, to get something higher. Um, but yeah, you do you do need to keep it in mind um, to to keep to raise your your or try to raise your rates. I think consistently because I mean, just as inflation uh, um, occurs and and people get pay raises in companies, the same way you need to think about that. It it can be it can be. Um, it can be difficult to to ask for it and and once you're comfortable with the rate and once you're comfortable with knowing that you're going to get this rate because it's a pretty standard um um a pretty standard level in the industry then it it gets hard to convince people that you're worth more than the other guy and i think it it, it first and foremost has to do with your own mindset i think that you need to tell yourself mm -hmm. yes i Yes, uh, what, like to think about what else can you offer? What sets you apart from the rest? What is it actually that you provide that is worth more than uh, the other guy, right? Because you need to, even if it's fifty dollars more a day, you need to have a justification for for that. To or you should you should have a justification to yourself in order to convincingly mm -hmm. tell somebody else of that conviction you have. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, and, and and I mean, with thinking about that, I mean. I think, I mean, back then I had no information. Course, yeah. I mean, nobody, yeah. it was this thing, you know, and, and I think for, for this episode, I think we also want to not just talk about how we would negotiate yeah. or, or, you know, but one of those, the most important things is, well, you need to have information. Exactly. So I always like to, to, to compare it to like buying a car. When I go to buy a car, I find out what the invoice price is exactly. so that, uh, I know not to overpay for the car, right. um, and and without knowing those numbers, you go in there blind. You you it's really hard to negotiate anything. Exactly. So um, you want to you know just maybe shoot into the like maybe some of the numbers, or do you want to say some more about what we we're just talking no, about? No, I mean it's uh, I w I can I can share more of course of what 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 uh, I earned in, in pre in previous jobs and everything but it kind of feeds no, no, into I mean, the directly were... into yeah into the numbers that we have but, so and you want to preface it by just telling them like you know you how you yeah, gathered it like just definitely you know, yeah. right because i mean um basically we had uh, the option to i don't know do a survey or something ask anonymously but i think more reliable information is gathered through first hand um Uh, mm -hmm. Contact. So I've I've I had countless of 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 talks and exchanges over email with a lot of um, very senior people, um, art directors, hiring managers to talk about um, what basically a concept artist and illustrator earns these days in various industries or in in the most in the most common areas of the world. Right. Um, I wasn't able to get mm -hmm. from every little single country something, but I think we have covered. Um, the biggest, the biggest areas, the the sure, hot spots for film, the hot spots for games, um, and all these kind of things. So we can we can run through those a little bit, and I'll I'll have some footnotes here and there. And uh, please do interrupt me when it gets too too much, because I have a few tables prepared um, for all those guys who are only <laughs> listening. No, yeah. but I, I think it's. It's great that they know, you know, just sort of, a, I mean, I think most people have an idea yeah. and it's, it's not really a sort of a, a super secret, no, 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 but I think not. knowing some numbers, uh, may help you guys just really, uh, understand exactly. how, where you stand. I think 
mainly for the for the people who are just starting exactly, out, right? Exactly. Because but even they, even for people, yeah. I think, who want to relocate, I think um, it's important to know, like, what do like, often people don't know, like, oh, what, what what actually is the like? I'm getting this here in I don't know Germany, but oh, so what about the US? Like, if I want to move there, like, what can I reasonably expect in a in a senior on a lead position, right? Is that offer I'm getting from that company is it really a fair a fair wage for that location right so let's jump mm -hmm. into that and i'll have some footnotes um for whatever so we're, we've uh, largely grouped it by um film and vfx um and also games and then also in freelance and in-house mostly because um, the the payment structure for freelance and in-house is just very different in in how how, how it's calculated so i wanted to um, give that overview and also to make it more digestible. Um, so we have the, the the first slide here, and for everybody who's listening, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you exactly what's on the slide, so you don't go crazy. Um, so let's talk about film. Let's talk about VFX and freelancing. So I have junior, mid, and senior here, and I also have US and UK rates. Um, U.S. and U.K. because it's the main hubs for for movies and these rates, uh, th these locations, U.S. and U.K. are not are not uh, important in terms of where you are based. It's where the production is based. So if you're talking to a, a U.S. studio in in wanting to hire you, um, as a junior, I think a, a reasonable rate to expect I think is between three hundred to five hundred um, U.S. dollars a day. Um, and of course, I have to say to that, um, that there's always going to be a range. It's always, it's not going to be set in stone. There's always a range because it depends on your experience. There are multiple level of junior, there are multiple level of senior, right? It's not like, um, it's not everybody is the same and can expect the same. I just, I, yeah. I have a question yeah, actually, you know, I don't know if you know the answer to this, but, uh, do they have, what about apprentice slash intern? Uh, you know, do they even because I, I know that at some companies they have this apprentice, uh, you know, like position um, for have you even heard of stuff like does that, that anymore? Does it, does it exist in film? I mean, in games, I can uh, probably more imagine that to happen. Um, it, it I know it was like that for, um, you know, a VFX, some VFX places. Okay. Uh, oh. But I, I, you know, and I know definitely know their intern right. jobs, I mean, yeah. which is a really good way to to sort of get your foot in and for them to see who you exactly. are. Exactly, I've, I've heard of that in in game studios in in Europe in particular. I I I heard some people are doing like internships as a as a way of like taking the initiative, and you can take during the internship really show what you can do. And, and can make, it can make yourself known in the studio um, if, if the studio is not very confident in giving you like a junior role right away. Um, of course, it's going to be lowly. Yeah. It's going to be very low pay. Um, it, it, very it low can, pay. Yeah. Like a few, no, hundred, won't, won't a, a few hundred dollars a yeah. month, basically. That's what you're talking about. Five, six hundred dollars a month, maybe not more than that. Right. Because um, I, I um, just as an yeah. example, uh, at ILM, there was a, you know, um, some of my friends, friends now are people who were interning at ILM, uh, like Colin Fix. I worked mm -hmm. with him at, uh, at IMD or Josh Veers. Uh, yeah, yeah, I know both Did you work them. with Josh yeah. Veers? So he, he was an intern at ILM. Oh, okay. um, and I think it was a paid intern, but you know, usually the intern jobs are, doesn't, they don't, you know, last very long. Yeah. It's maybe a month or right. two. Uh, and, uh, and, you know, I know Brian, you know, Brian matches. Mm, yeah, of course. Yeah. I met him. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I think he was also kind of a was he a PA or an oh, intern? Really? I'm not sure, but uh, but you know, it, at that time when people see what you do, right, it, and they'll help you grow. Uh, that is a way. Pixar, I know, does that oh, okay. definitely. Um, so anyway, I don't want to derail you. No, 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 I, I that's just a good point. Thought, ah, that's a good point. So that's kind of like of below junior. You have to say you have to put that, and people should. I mean, I think there's there's a general apprehension against these kind of jobs that they're too low for them, that people think they're too good already. And, um, but we should definitely say that that's really not the case. If th these kind of things can lead to uh, future employment and it can lead to many great yeah, because opportunities. Look at Brian. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's like Colin, amazing now. Josh, they're all like senior guys Josh is now. in the union. Yeah. Brian is on Star Wars. Yeah, Colin exactly. was on Star Wars. So, yeah. you know, it, it, they all have now, to start yeah. somewhere. Yeah. Big names anyway, now. sorry. Yeah. So... 
once you've made it out of that impress out of that apprenticeship and once you uh, um, have a few titles under your belt um, you can I mean, there's no official titles like, or oh, you're mid, you're senior now, right? It's kind of like based on your experience, so it's a bit fluid, right? So if you go up from a from a mid uh, position in the U.S., um, freelancing maybe for five se to seven hundred dollars a day, and then you get to a senior, which is like seven to a thousand U.S. dollars a day, and it can go beyond that. Um, so there are many, actually not that many people who can charge more than a thousand dollars a day because they usually have a very special set of skills that only they can provide. And there, there, there is not really like a hard limit. It just depends on how badly they want you. And also, um, it also, you have to, you have to be aware that you're pricing yourself out of most projects let's say you are super special you do something that nobody else can do you can charge two thousand dollars a day um, or more or three thousand but you need to be aware that you're going to have maybe one project a year um uh, well like that, i mean right? just just so that i can piggyback yeah, sure. on that because this film freelance vfx side is is sort of uh, I'll just say also the union side of hmm. things because uh, when it comes to f freelance film, that's pretty much union, mostly union based. Mm -hmm. I mean, on the next slide, we'll have in-house yeah. VFX houses. But I'll just say that when I freelance for VFX houses, usually is, I would say, 200 bucks less yeah, a day. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. For VFX. Uh, and, and union can actually go you know up to i mean i i, I know uh there are jobs that you can go up to like 14 1500 a day mm -hmm. um but now the thing is just remember this if you're charging and of course for the people who are really experienced that are going to charge that much that's sort of you know whatever <laughs> we don't need our advice but um i would just say that uh the higher you charge uh the shorter probably your stay on that oh, yeah. project is. that's a good point uh, and a lot of people forget that, hey, I'll charge that rate. They're okay with it. But you know what? You may only work a month yeah. uh, or two months. Whereas the person who's charging a little less, it'll, you know, somebody charging $9.99 <laughs> as opposed to $1,200, they'll probably say, well, let's keep the $9.99 guy for three months. Yeah. Um, so just keep it yeah. in mind because charging high is not a bad thing, obviously. Yeah. But you have to temper it with, well, how long do you want to stay on the mm, show? That's a good point. That's a very good uh, point. Anyway. Yeah, no, that, yeah. that's very, very true. Um, that makes a big difference. Um, yeah, so yeah, guys, keep in mind, right? The US is for everything, I have to say, in this industry, games or film is the highest paid. You, know, you get the highest pay in general, right? But you have to always keep in mind, right? There's many more factors. We'll talk about these in a second, right? While I yeah. bring on some okay. other mm -hmm. stuff here. So the UK has established itself as another big hotspot for um, big, big movie productions. But um, the, the rates are consistently um, lower and it's harder to, to push through US rates. I guess that could be also one of the factors why they have been able um, to get so many jobs away from Hollywood through tax incentives and also through um, artists being a bit less expensive, right? So in the I'm actually I'm kind of surprised. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's it's funny though because I always ask myself like if you would live in an expensive city and in 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 the U in the UK like UK it's, expensive. It's expensive and London is the heart <laughs> of the, the the UK film industry. It's it's extremely expensive to live there, so that the the, the rates have not go gone, gone up uh, respectively. It's it's quite um, surprising mm, to see. Surprising. But anyway, so we'll we'll have a junior in the UK maybe start at like two hundred to three hundred um, US dollars a day. You need to convert that into British pounds, of course. And then in the middle, you're gonna go up to like maybe four fifty, and then it kind of tops out for for. Uh, like the regular kind of um, senior guys at like 600 and maybe in special cases go it goes a bit higher than that um, mm -hmm. but um, you 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 can't be really looking at much more than that to be honest um, so yeah that that's kind of like the, the film freelancing area there's not really any other places to compare it to because there are no other major um, um, production hotspots and most most likely mm -hmm. you're going to be hired mm -hmm. out of one of those two countries if you work on, on on this kind of big hollywood stuff um 
anyway yeah. so if we look at the other side right there's many people working in in the film in the vfx industry in-house right um film and vfx kind of together i mean there's we were talking about um um, people who are working inside like um, Disney or they work inside Pixar or they work inside like places like Framestore that or like MPC, DNEC, ILM that are providing um, concept art services not only in pre-production but also in post-production, right? Um, mm -hmm. But usually they don't hire necessarily special artists for that as far as I understand. they If you work like, let's say you work at ILM, then you kind of will be pulled in whatever project is needed right now. So that might be pre-production, that might be post-production. Mm -hmm. I think that's that's kind of how it works. So um, let's look at some averages here. And I think in the in the US it starts a bit higher, um, probably looking at like 60 to 70,000 US a day. Um, and it goes through mid um, up to senior well, a year, level. A year, yeah, right? a year. These are yearly um, rates now, b whereas yeah. before the freelance was per day. So a senior can can earn like a hundred thousand or plus. And there's there's um, quite a big, um, I think, leeway. There's quite a big um, um, range that it goes up to. So if you have a lot of experience, if you're very good, um, if you're in a lead or principal position, you can you can make quite a bit more than that. Um, to be honest, and this is this is including benefits, right? Um, this usually For includes in benefits. Yeah, you have your health insurance, yeah. you have all sorts of other stuff, um, holidays, of course, holidays which a freelancer does not have. Keep that in mind. Um, if you if you go on a holiday, you don't get paid. So in yeah. the UK, it's generally yeah, a bit lower. There are many options in the UK. Um, so there are some houses who will be a bit on the low end. There are some houses who are, will be, uh, of course, higher. So um, you have to take a step down, though, um, compared to the years. So you're looking at forty-five to 60,000 a year for a junior, um, 50 to 75,000 for mid. And then it goes really into senior and lead level. You're looking at 75,000 to 100,000 to more. Right. So the lead positions are very, very coveted in film and in games. And um, there's 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 quite a bit more to be made. But again, it depends really on the person, um, how valued you are in the studio, how good your work is, how many years of experience you have. Um, looking at Europe in general is tricky because there is um, there's not that much breadth. So you have a few other areas like in Germany, they're doing a lot of um, film production now and setting up more studios. You have stuff like uh, Trickster, you have, I think MPC is now starting um, and, and these kind of studios. So again, you, you kind of have to take a step down again from the UK, um, looking at maybe like 38 to 44 um, for a junior position, thousand a year, again, US dollars, need to make your own mm. conversion. Um, I don't know, 50 to 60 in the mid, 60 to 80 in a senior and again, more for a lead. Um, that's what you're looking at now. Uh, looking at Australia, New Zealand, which is also kind of um, it, it's <laughs> the, the numbers it, completely it, just went. It, it, it is very different um, there because you're looking at but the cost of the living, cost of is, living different, is, right? is very uh, very much lower, and the numbers are kind of on par though with um, the the average kind of like. Uh, um, uh, salaries that you would that you would be able to expect with similar seniority in other jobs so it, it, it might look low compared to to the other areas but um, um, if you live there you you're gonna have still a very very good lifestyle um, so I mean it's it's just what it is right so you're looking at junior maybe 22 20 25 to 35 kind of thousand uh, uh, a year, um, US dollars in, in the mid goes up to maybe 45,000 senior level to 45 and plus. And again, let's go yeah. up from there. So, you know, yeah. yeah, I mean, this is great information, but just, you know, you can always come back to this part of the videos and, 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 and look at the exactly, slide, exactly. Uh, you know, we, we, you know, because I think uh, what we we have a lot of sort of tips yeah, you want to get to coming those. after this that we <laughs> really want to show you guys uh you know at least from our point yeah, of view yeah. what's worked for us that's, that's uh, important. but you know i think this is a good mm. place to you know and and thanks jan for doing all the all, yeah it took all, a while well, it took a, a while of leg work but no worries <laughs> yeah because just so everybody knows that you know this takes time mm. to gather this information um and we really uh took pride in trying to find the right information yeah. not just you know anything exactly. you know These are all, it's not guesswork this is yeah yeah from people that you knew and i yeah. knew 
I, the people that we so, trust. Yeah. Very important. Yeah, and people that we trust. Yeah, <laughs> to provide good information. Okay, right? Anyway, so let's. This is kind of like the film area now. Um, now let's have a look at um, maybe sorry the games and freelance area now it's going to be very similar i think in terms of the us and uk market in terms of games and freelance now um, these are kind of rates like for for let's say triple a where we have a lot of experience and also um contacts in um in general i think you you can expect at least in the us uk europe you can expect um maybe like $200 less for mobile games on average. So keep that in mind. So I think the bracketing is kind of similar in, in, in movies that I've experienced. So junior three to 500, like a, a lot of like outsourcing studios uh, would kind of get their juniors in at that kind of level, $300 a day, a day kind of level up to like maybe 500 if you like already quite a few titles under your belt mid five to 700 mm -hmm. senior 700 to a thousand and, and above that you mm -hmm. can you can go above that there's a bit more flexibility there's no union um and there's a there's a bit more um room for for growth in the uk again we're looking at very similar rates to film 250 to 400 mm -hmm. a day uh, for junior four to 650 but then here in the senior area you can grow into similar areas as in the US. It's not like um, you can you can you can make more. I think being a freelance uh, designer on 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 games than you can in in, in uh, film. To be honest, and Europe again take a step down um, in general two fifty to three fifty the uh, three fifty to five fifty for mid six hundred to seven fifty for a senior. Um, you have to kind of take a step down um, because the, the, the industries are not as big, not as developed as in the US and UK. Mm -hmm. And now the biggest the, the biggest table we have to look at because that's where a lot of people work is in-house uh, for games and around the world. And I have a, I have a few mm -hmm. more numbers um, here and I don't want to I don't want to like go crazy through it. You can again look at this on YouTube and, and take a good I can take a screenshot if you want to, right? I mean, these are all with a big, big um, 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 asterisk. Like, um, this is what we have collected. This is what our sources have told us. There will be outliers. There will be outliers on the bottom end. There will be outliers on the top end, right? So there are certain companies who are known for paying a lot more. They pay on average twenty to $30,000 more uh, per year. And they give you great bonuses. And there's also smaller companies that will just pay maybe five to ten thousand dollars less. Um, so keep that in mind, right? So hey, yeah, and for for the for the for the people who um, who are watching this, maybe years later, <laughs> just yeah. just uh, you know, this is 2020. Adjust for inflation. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <That's>... Exactly. <laughs> you never know, right? Now you have to like um, again. I have to say like there's so many different factors like you are going to do yourself a disservice if you're going to compare these numbers like as if they are for the same country it's not in different countries are uh, uh, different it, it's going to cost you a different amount of money to rent a house um healthcare gonna be different right and um, just lifestyle how much it costs to go shopping how much it costs to send your kids mm -hmm. to school um the benefits are going to be different insurance is going to be different um you need to you need to do a lot more research than just like look at these numbers and say like this is how much i should be getting um if you get if you have universal health care it's going to be a very different thing than when you work in a, in a country that doesn't have it you need to save a lot more money for the rainy days than you would have to in other countries right mm. and sure, universal sure. healthcare also does not mean it's it's the best thing in the world right you still have mm -hmm. to go to a, a regular gp and you have to line up like everybody else so this is not the mm -hmm. golden ticket to get you out of all your troubles but at the other end it's also not going to bankrupt you if you have an accident right so there's okay. many 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 different ways here right so let's say in the in, in games on average in the us you're going to start at like maybe 50 to 60k um a year and then you're going to go up and there's also always that lead position so you're going to go through the ranks maybe a senior up to 95 hundred thousand, and then lead 120 140 000. in the us there's also always or a, a lot of times bonus packages uh, stock options if you work at a big company though they will add on top of that um, performance-based stuff and 
all sorts of stuff. In the UK, take a step down, right? Uh, bonuses too. Yeah, right? bonuses yeah. can be very large depending on the performance of the title. Yeah, I mean, I worked at uh, Sony, and and every year was a was a pretty hefty bonus. Yeah. Uh, and then once the it came out, if it made, you know, the game did well, they made even more. And it's for the people I talk to, bonuses are are commonplace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, very rarely do you not get a yeah. bonus. So that is something that you kind of have to factor yeah, in. That's good to know. As well. it's, but it's a very US centric thing, I think. I think in UK yeah, and yeah, Europe, yeah. it's yeah. less the case, right? You might mm -hmm. you might get bonuses, but I wouldn't I wouldn't expect anything massive, to be honest, mm -hmm. not like in the US. In the UK, so take a step down from the US numbers, right? Maybe 35 to 50 for a junior, and it goes up again. You, you're ending up at maybe like, um, 75 to 85,000 um, for for a lead position and above that, right? Again, leads are, are, are heavily rewarded um, for for what they provide. Um, in Europe, um, it's, it's going to be is 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 a bit tricky. Europe in itself is is a vast area, right? So I've kind of split it up here into Europe and Eastern Europe because there there is quite a big difference. So in in, in Europe in general, Western Europe, um, um, Germany as as one of the bigger areas, also France and stuff, you're going to look at 40 to 50, similar to the UK. I think the UK and, and Europe numbers are quite similar, um, as a, but the, the leads seem to be getting a bit more in, in Europe um, on average. So topping out at maybe like 100,000 and a bit more um, for a lead. So again, look at the table. It's, it's a lot of numbers to go through and I don't want to bore you, right? Eastern Europe looks very different, slash all, everything that I told you about Europe, slash it in half. Um, yeah, and just remember, everybody, that it's it's really about cost of living. Oh, yes, yes, You yes. know, what I was saying, like, how many studios are yeah. there? I mean, if you only have one studio in this country, yeah, you know, exactly. it's probably not going to pay a no, whole no, no, lot. No, 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 so, competition, right? And, yeah. yeah, cost of living in Eastern Europe is very, very much lower. You can, you can afford a lot mm. more than if you live in, like, a hot spot like London, right? So um, keep that yeah. in mind, right? So Eastern Europe, you're looking at, like, I don't know, seventeen to 20,000 a, a, a year, for a month, a year for a junior. And then it goes up to maybe, like, 40,000 mm. for a lead. Um, again, look at the breakdown. And, again, it varies a lot. <laughs> Asia is a tricky yeah. thing um, because Asia is very, very, very big, very diverse. Um, I mean, I have to lump into it China, Japan, Korea, Singapore, Malaysia, um, a, a lot of diversity in here. Um, again, there are some countries who pay quite a bit lower than the numbers I have already on here. And some, mm -hmm. some areas that are paying quite a bit more. And there's also... I mean, yeah, I go ahead. Sorry, I, I found that uh, in China, uh, I, um, specifically, yeah. uh, if if they hire somebody from overseas to come yeah. work there, they're actually willing to pay quite a oh, high yeah. rate, yeah. Uh, and and to relocate yeah. and all your fees is taken mm -hmm. care of, and so you know that if you are willing to travel, yeah, uh, overseas uh, is not a bad yeah, option. Exactly, um, that's true. I yeah. mean, these these uh, just no, that's true. But these these rates are kind of like more the average rates that the people living mm -hmm. there would get. And I think yeah. it's very, 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 very important to highlight that your experience as like, someone who came up in the, not, not like, sorry, not your experience, but uh, I know a lot of listeners are from the US and your experience working in those countries might be different than what the locals really experience. So like you rightfully said in China, they will try to match your salary a US salary if you go and relocate there. So you might be earning three times more than the guy who's sitting next to you who's a local. So keep that in mind, right? Same for same for uh, Singapore as well. They will pay um, foreigners more um, than locals. Um, so that's just mm. something to keep in mind. So it, I mean, the juniors start yeah. as low as like 15 to 25. Again, there's a range, the different countries, different things, right? So don't don't run around in, in a country where it's lot, usually a lot lower and asking for like 25, 30,000 um, when you know it's completely out of out of whack with, with the rest of the economy, right? Because again, lo local rates and local studios are 
are aligned with the local economy, right? So keep that always in mind, right? Um, mid, mid, mid ranges to 20 and 35, senior to 30 to 50, lead positions 50 or more. Um, it, 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 that, that's just how it is, right? Um, and it's not as high as in a lot of Western countries, right? Yeah. So keep that. And these mind. are all just ballpark numbers, ballpark numbers you know, right? no exact but all, numbers. All yeah. firsthand, um, firsthand <clears throat> um, uh, collected from a lot of um, big studios. So this is not like no name kind of stuff. This is really where all the big studios are. Um, cool. Um, I think in terms of our. Um, uh, sorry, local, ra uh, the, sorry, the in illustration rates. Um, it's a bit more, there's a, there's a lot of big ranges here um, because it, it, it depends on a lot of factors, right? So if you do illustration, you're going to be a freelancer, most likely, right? Yeah, I, don't, I don't know. If and most of it is going to be per, per piece, piece, right? right. Remember exactly. that, per piece, not, not time exactly. now. And there's a, there's, there's a lot of different factors, right? It depends on what kind of publisher are you working for, right? Is it like a small indie one? Is it like a regular? Is it like a like a huge one? Are you doing like rare covers? Um, all these kind of factors can... Um, uh, factor in but in general i can we can say that in the us you're gonna still if you have us clients you're gonna get a fair bit more um, um mm -hmm. they are just they are just reserving a lot more um uh, money for these kind of things so you you can look up look at it anywhere from like 1500 to like even 6000 for experienced illustrators on big projects per piece right um, in the us if you if, if you for the uk you're looking at probably like like a half that um, but again there's there's lots of ranges in there it's just we are not that ingrained in the illustration industry so please take these uh, numbers with a grain of salt right this, this is still mm. still information we got from people who are working there um and um who have experience doing comic covers working for magic the gathering um and all mm -hmm. these kind of things um but but please do keep in mind right that that um um this all is not set in stone. And it kind of leads me into, uh, it leads me very conveniently into the area we want to talk about now, which is the negotiation part. Um, so we have all these numbers. So now we have the information. Now, what can you tell me? Uh, how am I going to get my money? Uh, how, how am I going to get my money? <laughs> how am I going to get what I'm worth? Give me my, Give money. Me my money. How do I get what I'm worth? Right. What can how can you um, how can you uh, uh, like you want to introduce some strategies um, that we have employed, although I don't want to call them strategies. It's more like like tips, like what did I do? How did I what, what did I do to successfully up my rate? What should I look out for? Um, what is good? Uh, good to good to know. Do you want to do you want to start off with some of your. I mean, you know, we obviously just started, you know, earlier just by talking, okay, some, you know, like, okay, pinging people and, you know, the etiquette. Right, right, you know, right. That's on good how, points already. Yeah. How to, so, so, you know, that, that's already something um, that, you know, that, that we, that we did and and i think in in, in that case uh you know that there's a the the sort of the, the doug story that i had where uh you know i, I met him on on star so wars you're talking but about I Doug Chang, right him. yeah okay. doug chang so i didn't really work with him directly uh but i did go in and ask him what was required um you know to be a concept artist because at that time i was an animatics artist okay animatics, at okay. the yeah. ranch so, you know, I was doing something completely different, but I looked at the across the hall where all the art guys were like at Natividad yeah. and, you know, all those, yeah. you know, art people were there at Ian McKaig and everybody. And I was like, I want to be there. Yeah. And I, I asked Doug, I said, how can I be there? And he told me, OK, here's, you know, what I look for in a concept artist. So I took that time and I just started sort of practicing. Right. And I start doing, doing it. So I would email him every year <laughs> with a portfolio. Nice. And, and it, I, it took a good seven years, nice. eight years. And I kept emailing, 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 emailing. And then at, at one point he said, he emailed me back. He goes, stop emailing me. I have a position for you. Damn. <laughs> and that was image movers so you know it's just a just a funny way of saying just you know be persistent it's a funny way of um, saying like i love that number seven years guys please listen to that okay nothing don't expect to be famous in seven months he emailed 
Doug Chang for seven years. Okay, that's how long it takes. Okay, guys, yeah. that's how long it takes. And, yeah, and 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 this is, you know, I mean, obviously, some people will have a better, you know, faster yeah, yeah, yeah. track. Some people will have a longer track, but just be persistent, but be nice. Exactly. I think that's one of my big big things. Be, you know, just really personal and 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 when you're personal it makes people easier to know mm. you and to want to work right. with you because if you come across as just a person uh that's just in it for himself right. i just want to get money i want to get mm. paid a lot of this times uh where i've interviewed people and when people have interviewed me or when i've heard about stories of people interviewing it, it's always about who that person is right. more than right. what the work is. Right. Uh, there are superstars, right? There are all oh, yeah, that yeah, work is course. so awesome. Um, but most people will hire based on personality more than work. Right, right, right. I don't know. How do you feel about that? It's, it's, uh, it's, it's difficult to say that when everywhere else you he like, oh, only your portfolio matters. Right. That's kind of the common thing. Like, oh, like everybody is so hung up on whether like to have a degree or have a portfolio that they completely forget about. Yeah, I totally agree about the personality part of it. I mean, all the stories you've told me and, and, and the way I know you is that um, like you have gotten jobs through not, not, to, not to say that your portfolio is not good, but it's so important that your portfolio is solid. And I'm, I'm always sure that your portfolio was always solid. But that thing that um, is going to get you hired is, is um, yeah, your personality. It's kind of like the portfolio gets you into the door. The portfolio gets you the opportunity. But what gets you hired in the end is you yourself, right? And yeah. it does. It is not necessary to be some to pretend to be someone you're not, right? Um, it's just you need to, like, I don't know. Like, do do you feel like you need to uh, present yourself like as as the best person you can be? Kind of. I mean, if you're like if you're like naturally like. Uh, like you said before, like naturally you're in, introverted. You you're very awkward around people. You're like like what 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 would you do if you're somebody like that, right? What do you? I think I think that you know for people who are more introverted, um, I think a freelance lifestyle what might be a little bit of a better way to go because you know you're it, the contact is a little bit left to a, a more of a minimum. Yeah. Um, and you can kind of exercise your expression as an artist a lot easier because you won't have someone standing over right, you right, right. all the time at a studio. Uh, but unfortunately, you know, for a lot of people who are, who are introverted to, to the point of being awkward, uh, it's going to be harder. Yeah. It's, it's, it's just how the society is. And, and I, I've, you know, I personally don't know any um, introvert tips because yeah, yeah. i'm not really yeah, yeah, yeah. introverted so you know, i can't you know mm, but I, i'll just say that um i would probably pursue a more freelance mm, lifestyle probably, yeah. uh it, you know I, and i think that once you a lot of even in, introverted or not people once they build their relationship then then they can really shine right um and i think you know you have to find the right team right That's really true, right? um but I think for a lot of people, you know, being at an interview, because I, I feel like in my life that that's the one place I was never afraid of was the interview. Oh, that's good. I was always yeah. I was always very comfortable because I always I felt good going in to get to know somebody and be me. Mm. And I had no problem doing right. that. So, you know, and people felt comfortable with me because. You know, I was just being me. Yeah, that's you good. know, and but I was respectful. I, mm. but I also try to read. You know, what do they need? Like, you know, if if a company wants you, let's say, to, um, you know, be a high level thinker uh, and do a lot of designs that are very blue mm. sky, and you come in and you say, well, I'm a very technical painter, mm. and I need a lot of direction, they probably won't hire you. So you have to really look at them and say, hmm, read the situation and OK, that's what they need mm -hmm. and uh, see whether you can uh, let them see that side of you. Right. Right. You know, because, you know, you may also have a very blue sky side, but you, you don't know. Right. But from the way you're talking, they might have a really good feeling mm -hmm. about it, you know. 
Um, so I think a lot of times, you know, doing your research for the place oh, yeah. that's going to hire you Absolute is key, huge. Right. Because, you know, if you're going to go go to a game place or a film place, and let's say you go to a game place and they do, uh, you know, Riot Games and you you are doing like photo reel Call of Duty stuff. That's what your portfolio yeah. is. Th that's not going to work. Exactly. Uh, because that's not what they need. Exactly. So you have to do your research. Who are you interviewing with? I would totally get to know who that is because you might be able to find information. Mm -hmm. Uh, if you can see his art and 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 you know your your lead or the person interviewing you and you can see art, maybe that's something you can like. But don't lie. But don't lie like, oh, I love your art. But when you actually don't like it, yeah, you're but just lying to yourself. Yeah. I've done that. I've done that so 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 many times. You know, so it's just one of those things where I feel like, um, you know, I just feel like it's. You you have to um, I I don't know I I I I'm sorry that that thing just broke my flow, <laughs> uh, but yeah I mean can you what, what do you feel about it? So are you talking about the research part or? Yeah, the the research part I think is oh, is uh, you have to. It, it's I mean have you you know you must have done that before? Of course, of course. I mean. Um, I think it was really helpful, though, that I, I didn't start out in in game companies. Um, that I was again in a very in a very corporate environment for quite a while, where um, maybe these kind of things are a lot more common and a, a lot more talked about. That I mean, you just if you, if you apply for a company, you do heavy, heavy, heavy research into what this company does, um, what they would need, who are you talking to. Um, who who's going to be sitting in the interview like you, you might you you will be, you can ask that you you will be able to find out um if it's like the art director lead artist hr um like try to research those things see who these people are like where have they worked at before right um it, it like i always like I, I always would actually call it like stalking like stalk these people right <laughs> like, like seriously, like no, no, yeah. Do your research and everything. Like, figure out this company. Like, uh, is this company set up by people who have worked at different studios before? Is it like a new company? Is it like a yeah? Oh, absolutely. Whatever you can. Yeah. Where are they located? Right. What is the like? research about like okay, this company is in the UK. They usually pay this. This they have worked with this guy. Um, Honestly, I also like when sometimes I get contacted by companies I have never heard before. And I mean, I'm not claiming to know everything, right? But sometimes you hear a company and you're like, what? And you can't find any information about this. So what I would usually do is just I ask some of the some of my peers, some of my friends, and it's like, hey, have you ever heard of them? Like they are in this area. Like, have you ever dealt with any of them? Have you worked for them? Right. And you might you might uh, find some interesting things the, I think. The most important thing with that, though, is um, you might get some people who have bad experiences with certain companies and they will try to 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 complain about them and, and say they're they're bad and never work with them. And um, there is a factor, though, where something like that is very personal and you should not generalize it necessarily. Like if you hear lots of accounts of this company like screwing people over then be very very careful but if you have like and, and one, 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 one sorry one one account here yeah, or there okay. it's like oh i didn't like this guy and then maybe there's there was some other reason why they they didn't like it yeah. but so you still have an open mind right about about working <laughs> together with <laughs> this company right it's not um yeah that's sorry that's that's what yeah. i'm gonna so, say yeah yeah um also, what you know, this came to mind is like uh, on you know any in-house job. Most of them, I've always interviewed with more than one oh, person. Oh yeah, definitely. It's, so I think a lot of people don't realize, like like Pixar is, is a good example of it's an all-day interview. Yeah. They really put you through it, and, and because they want to stress test and see mm. you know your personality exactly. because. Any mo like Doug, Doug Chang was like that. Uh, you know, I went, I have interviewed at uh, PDI. I've interviewed at, uh, you know, a lot of, you know, Disney. There's a lot of big places that will do that. And they want to know who you are. Right. Definitely. You know, and, and it's really, really important um, right. to allow that time to know that, hey, that, that mm -hmm. interview 
to 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 the only way you're going to come through it is by being yourself and not acting like somebody else right. or acting like a certain persona and you know or really down on yourself some people do that a lot you know um you have to go in there with confidence right. that's important confidence not arrogance right no definitely wait uh so so that's uh, so you do you have another one you want to go oh in terms of my tips you mean okay. yeah i mean we'll just go back and forth yeah I mean, um, actually, like, like uh, I, your tips are very much about, um, um, how do I say, about um, like the, the, the kind of the, the things around it and, and um, not necessarily like, I wouldn't call them necessarily like a strategy, right? Like, okay, you should, you should do this, you should do that. It's just like general attitudes that you have to have and general... Yeah, the research thing is probably a well, strategy. Yeah, that's fair but enough, fair enough. That's... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, like for me, it's like, for, for me, it's like a lot about mindset. Um, and maybe that's, that's a bit on the aggressive side. But I think once you flip certain switches in your brain, it helps you be a lot more relaxed about the negotiation process. So, how do you do so that? for me, it's like, I always try to tell myself like, um, this company reached out to me, they are interested in me. So what that means is that um, they, they need more they, they they need me more than I need them. Right. So even though there are many factors, even though maybe you're strapped for cash, even though this project sounds amazing and it's like your dream project, do not let that get in the way of a cool headed negotiation because all these things, all these, all this private interest and all this stuff will cloud your mind. Um, and at the end of the day, you're not, you're not doing that company a favor. That company is going to use your, use your skills and it's going to tell you what to do. They're going to take up all your time mm -hmm. and they're not doing it for, for the goodness of mankind. Um, they are making it to make <laughs> even more money and they're paying you like it doesn't matter if they're paying you 700 or 900 a day it doesn't make any difference for them to be honest because they it's a it's a 200 million dollar budget they're going to make two billion dollars at the box office at, at the end of the day your country you, how much you charge is not going to show up even on any spreadsheet um Maybe maybe Kevin Feige will disagree with me, but maybe he can come on the podcast <laughs> to to discuss that. <laughs> but but for you, like it it twenty percent increase can mean a lot. So you should fight for that, right? Um, yeah. And I... just to realize <laughs> that is is that like in the end they need you really badly to do this. But do you need them? Um, not necessarily. Yeah, I mean, you can I, I, move I, I... on to something else. Sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I was just going to say, you know, uh, just real quick is that it's your job to get as much as you can exactly. and it's their job to give you as little as they yeah, can. Exactly, right. So knowing that, I mean, I think, I mean, and, and I, I, I like that, uh, you know, as a business mm -hmm. sense, you know, to, to think like you're thinking, um, I, because I feel like, as a lot of times it's very hard to to be cool headed yeah yeah it's very hard uh, especially i mean i think especially for artists when someone says star wars yeah, exactly like, oh, okay, like, oh yeah, 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 yeah i'll do what i do it right and it's like that's <laughs> i mean yes in the end we all think that yes in the end we want to work for it but so like a second thing that i always also keep in my mind right is that um i always have two rates I, I, I have in mind when I go into a negotiation, right? And of course, those two rates are informed by everything we told you before, right? All those numbers, the research, everything, right? The location of the mm -hmm. company, all that is, is, those rates are adjusted by that. And so there's always one rate that I want, right? And there's one rate that I'm willing to work for. So the one I want is always going to be higher, right? It's always going to be higher. But in that no negotiation, um, it will, if, if, because it's a negotiation, it's not just like, uh, okay, this is what I want. And then they're going to say, yay, thank you. Um, and then they're going to pay you that, right? Actually, if they pay you that without negotiation, you know, you are way <laughs> too low, low, way too low, <laughs> right? So I have that rate I want. Let's call it, let's say it, let's just out of the blue, like let's say $1,200. That's what I want. That's what I'm going to ask you for. And um, that's how we're going to start. And I'm going to try to be quite firm on that for, for as long as I can. And then usually it will end up a little bit lower. But in my mind, I know mm. that 
I will work for this company for a thousand dollars. Like I'll do it. Mm. Like this, I'm happy with it. It makes sense. It's mm -hmm. aligned mm -hmm. with the rest. Um, but of course, I don't tell them that, right? So. Um, and oh, never give a range. Never give a range because they're always going to pay you the lowest one possible, right? Yeah, because everybody. Like, why yeah, wouldn't the, you, oh, right? Eight, it's like, oh, dude. 800 to 1,000. Why are they going to pay you 1,000? They're going to pay you 800. Exactly. <laughs> right? So I, they go in with this mindset that you have these two rates, right? And um, more likely than not, you will end up getting more than what you set in your mind that you were okay to work for, right? Um, and if it goes below that, there need to be special circumstances. Like if they offer like we cannot go one dime above 900, then I really need to think like, okay, so like what is this project? Do I like the people? Um, is this going to give me like exposure in a sense mm -hmm. of like, okay, this is something I can put in my resume. Um, that is going to give me future jobs. This is going to expose me to some high profile directors, right? All these things right, need to right. go in. And then I'm like, okay, just for you, I'll... How about how about also, you know, when I negotiate, I also try to find a way to stay the number, but offset other things. Offset like what? Uh, so, you know, so like, let's say, you know, um, okay, if, if I'm not, you know, 1200 a day, you only give me a thousand. Okay, I'll go a thousand, but how about I work longer? Mm, okay. How, how about I do more? Mm. You know, like I always will come back with something, not just a, like a number, but also, yeah. okay, if, if, I, if I read the situation, I have to be lower, then, then I want maybe more promises for some right. other things, right? Do you, yeah, and go ahead. You, you finish first. <laughs> so for, yeah, for the union, uh, you know, a lot of times you might take, because we have a box rate and a, and a day rate. Um, but sometimes I might just lower my box rate, which is the, the, the computer rental rate um, that exists in, in union uh -huh. jobs. Okay. And I'll lower that, but stay this number. Uh, okay. Because the reason being is if you stay at, let's just say, round number 1,000 a day, right? So you're 1,000 a day, and for whatever reason you've lowered this. Now, if you agree to a lower rate, the problem with a lot of these jobs is that they say, well, what did you make in your last job? Yeah. And so when they ask you that, you're you're screwing yourself because you just made a lower rate. That's why in unions, it's very, very difficult to get a, a, a raise mm -hmm. at all. So, you know, instead of working for a lower rate, I'll say I'll lower my box because nobody asks you what your box rate is. No, mm -hmm. They don't really care, but they'll ask you what you right. made. So that that's very very film union oh, specific, okay, okay. but anyway, sorry. Oh, Go interesting, ahead. interesting. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, what else do I have to say to to this? Do you have any more tips? I I have. Yeah, some I mean, more. typically for me, oops, sorry. Um, <laughs> typically for, me, I don't know what I just hit. Um, typically for me, uh, when I negotiate, I give. I, I obviously I have those numbers as well, um, but uh, I. I, I think that, you know, you have to really be aware of that when you give a high, when you give a number, they're always going to come mm -hmm. back. They're always going to talk you down. Yeah. And, and for you to, to know where that leeway is, it's just pretty much what you're saying. I mean, that's, that's kind of how I do it. Uh, and it get past a certain point, uh, you know, then when, when do you actually say, okay, this is not going to work. Cause sometimes right. being, being able is like buying the car mm -hmm. again, right? You, the classic walk out of the showroom, yeah. um, you think, you know, when you walk out and they chase after you, the salesperson, they, ah, oh, Hey, come back, come back. You know, like when are you willing, are you willing to walk out? Cause that's powerful. If you are in the negotiation, yeah. if you know, you can walk out and you walk out, uh, I've had jobs that came back. Yeah, I mean, that, that, that walkout thing, I mean, honestly, I go into every negotiation willing to walk out. I mean... Yeah, and, and that's hard because I never used to do that. I would be so really? afraid I would just take it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah no, I was, no, I, I I was not that. very I good that. at negotiating. I mean, it, for me, it's like it comes down to 
I mean, the thing that I've, I've, I'm always asked or like that I always see people complaining about kind of a little bit what I hinted at in the beginning is like, oh, I'm, I don't have any savings. Like, I feel like I have no choice but to accept whatever rate they're giving me. Right. Or like I have no confidence in asking more because I feel like they're just going to say no and they're going to go with somebody else. That, that fear of losing out um, is, yeah. is very strong. And I mean, there's a couple of. I think a couple of uh, things in uh, packed in there. One, one is that, yeah, we have that fear of losing out, um, which is completely imaginary, right? So, so what, what, what does it matter if you can't work on the latest, uh, I don't know, whatever movie, right? Um, there's going to be so many other opportunities, right? So that we stop running after yeah, this. That's, that's after the, I mean, yeah, it's, it's fine. But I mean, you honestly, you have to, you have to value your time more. Again, like all these projects, they're not they're not doing it for the goodness of mankind, right? Um, it's 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 a money machine, and you have to realize that, right? And um, for me, it's like I think at some point I stop I stop chasing that that creative fulfillment through client jobs because it's just not there. Um, I, for me, it's just not there. Like yeah, I'm, a lot of people starting out won't know. Yeah, that. that's and, and they'll feel like they're really yeah, missing and out. That, that's you know? that's fine, right? Um, it's. I, everybody will go through the same process, right? We're just talking from like, okay, we have done this for a while and and this is kind of what we have realized. And I know that a lot of young folks will still have to go through um, trial by fire, um, but we just, we just want to help to like make you aware of, yeah, the, of yeah, these yeah, yeah. things a little bit more, right? That um, th this fear of losing out is completely imaginary. Um, I have a way bigger fear of losing out of, not being able to spend enough time with my kids that is real fear of losing out because there's going to be another project there next year but my kid is going to be very different at age four and age five so i don't want to miss that right yeah so that's real the other one is completely imagined priorities yeah, yeah. and the other thing that is packed into this oh i have no confidence is that um in general you need to learn how to be very smart with money, especially if you're like a freelancer. You need to save an extraordinary amount of money um, to for the rainy days in, in order to keep yourself all options open, in order to not feel like you cannot like you have no choice but to accept the job you need to self you need to put yourself in a financial position that allows you to say no to anything and everything that comes along so that's based on that i always go into every negotiation and say like i'm i'm so ready to walk out of here if 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 this is not going to work out that does not mean i have to be arrogant about it that does not mean i have to say like you pay what i ask you and um mm -hmm. if you don't then you can go do whatever right um that does not mean that right that that just means that i have more options on the table that i can be more relaxed in the negotiation right um that i can look at it more cool-headed and more like okay does this really make sense um from from a financial point of view and and then if 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 i don't have to worry about that aspect too much then i can really decide properly like is this something I really want to do, right? Because, mm -hmm. I mean, honestly, ask yourself, like, is, um, I hear a lot of people complaining about how, how many projects they have done and how, how tiring it is and everything. I'm like, I'm like, and then they're like, oh, I'm going to start on something new next week. And I'm like, wait, wait a minute. Sorry, I thought you just wanted to break after, you wanted to take a long six-month break after you worked. You talk about no, me. No, 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 no. <laughs> but you, because that's how you're, I start. You're a prime example though, right? So like, oh, after working for 10 years without a holiday, like, didn't you say you wanted to take a break and now you work on another five movies? And I'm like, how does that make any sense, right? But th there is something there's something about that we're telling it ourselves that we have to we have to do this and then we have to do iron man four and five and six because that chance will never come again and it's all completely uh in your head and um well i mean to segue yeah, off yeah. of that i think please the big power of saying no because yeah. when you say no right mm -hmm. Uh, when you say no to the wrong thing, then you can say yes to the right thing. Yeah, exactly. And 
I think that's important. I mean, I mean, I don't want to get too metaphysical and all Please this do. stuff, but I, I, but I also feel like you got to attract that kind of stuff, yeah. and and you can't keep accepting the wrong exactly. jobs. And of course, for people starting out, they're thinking any job is the right job, right. but it really isn't. But like lo lo looking you know? back at your looking back at at your decisions that you made over the years in terms of like, um, on which job you accepted and which job to which job you 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 took because you had to you felt like you had to do you, do you ever feel like there was a time when um you you hit like a sweet spot of like you attracted exactly the ty the type of project that you wanted to get and um and and less of those that you just made purely to survive you feel like you you had like a sweet spot uh, or are you still you know, not I mean, there i don't know I'll have to be completely yeah. honest answering that question. I I think, I mean, I've been like that. I don't think there's ever been a time where I felt like, oh, you know, this is easy. I, I'm here at this yeah, job yeah, yeah. and I'm good now. I've always been, uh, I've the reason for this episode, I've always been a bad negotiator. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, I've always felt like, oh, yeah, okay, that's fine. Um, until I became a freelancer mm -hmm. and I've, I had to get better at it. I had to really look out for a lot of things. But being a freelancer, you're working on so many overlapping projects. I am the guy who said, I need a break. And, you know, I, I'll tell you, you know, this industry has a way of burning you mm. out, especially when you don't feel like you have that payoff. Right. Um, and, and so for me, I, th I think I really just started to get the real hang of it the last couple of years. Right. Um, and, and of course, you know, when I was on the matrix last year, that's when it really boosted. I mean, I was on real burnout. Right, right, right. And then I was on the matrix and it kind of brought me back. That's good. Um, so, you know, but, but that, I mean, that's a little bit of a yeah. segue, but, um, you know, I, I, and I also want to just say, you know, one of my biggest problems was I always came in too low. Mm -mm -mm. Right. So here's a, a good good way to, to put it. Um, a lot of times um, people will ask you your rate. Don't be afraid. If, if your rate is 500 a day, yeah. don't be afraid to say, well, okay, I think 500. Mm, I really want 500. So you say 600. Because a lot mm. of people will think, you know, they talk to me, ah, no, 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 if I 600, 600, they'll never even reply my email. And I don't think no, so no. because they'll always come back and say, that's too high. But that's fine, right? And and that's okay because they'll come back and say it's too high. Now you can negotiate. Right. And the best way after that is to say, what's your budget? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? That's a good way for them to come back. At, what are they really thinking? And then you can raise the price on right. that. And so th that kind of a negotiation is actually this kind of stuff I've learned to mm -hmm. say, okay, well, you obviously have a budget in mind. Let me see if it yeah. falls within. You know, let's let's cut out the crap. Let's see where you're really talking about. Yeah, I think that that, Any thoughts that, on that? it comes back to what yeah, I think you said before: confidence, not arrogance. I think um, mm. so. It, it's like we said before, right? The portfolio will get you into the door. The the company reaches out to yes. you because they like your portfolio. And now it's just basically like in in a freelance world, actually a bit easier because once they reached out to you, um, it it's pretty much you already got the job right as long as you don't screw up the formalities um it, it's pretty much a given right but like i mean still though i i treat like the first call with a potential freelance client i i, I treat it like an interview right so i do all the research i do everything and every and, and 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 so forth right but then i think what really is what really shows you as a professional is if you are confident about confident talking about money right even a lot of the art directors i talk to they're kind of like like very like touchy it's like oh yeah and i i don't like to talk about money but like what what is your rate like they're very afraid to ask almost and <laughs> so you <laughs> go sorry the, the more, i think I the more confident you are like if you say like yeah like so i've i've gotten 500 before and like I'm like is that okay if you if you if you talk, if you talk like that they're gonna say like uh we got 350 is that okay and then you're gonna be oh, okay uh, that's not how it works right yeah. so you're gonna say like and, and sorry here, i charge this and that's it like i yeah. charge yeah. x amount and that's it right and and then they're gonna say like oh okay like and the more confident you are like um the more 
comfortable they will be about like talking about it as yes, well. That's, right? a, that's, a, that's a very good point. And, and I, you know, I was really, when it came to money, I had a hard time talking. Mm -hmm. So I actually would talk to my friends and we would practice nice. it. Yeah, that's good. Uh, and, and, and people think, oh, that's stupid, you know, but I'm like, no, because you feel like you've already said this. Right when you practice, right? right? You, you said it a couple of times and you go, I went in there and I just, it was more natural yeah. and I didn't have to fumble my words. Exactly, right. The, the more you're saying, well, that's my rate versus what you were just saying, well, you know, maybe 500, you know, yeah, <laughs> what yeah, do you no, think? It's, it's, it's <laughs> you know, common, nobody's going to want yeah, that. Yeah. But, but for, for people who go, you know, who are afraid, you know, say, hey, look, this place is not budging. I'm sort of, at the beginning of my career or mid-level and they, they're saying okay they're only going to pay this much right. uh, for let's say an in-house job um i always tell people okay then put a clause in your contract that says that you'll have a three-month review right 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 view in three months with a potential raise to your full potential because and and have them agree to it right and so that they'll review you after three months and be willing to walk out if they don't yeah. do that but you have to put something in place because a lot of in-house jobs, they won't review you at least a year yeah, later. That's true. That's least. true. So, you know, you're not going to get a raise for at least mm -hmm. a year. And by that time, they kind of know that you're, you know, you're already in their ecosystem. Mm -hmm. You know, they're going to just give you if they give you a raise, it's going to be your, your inflation rate. Yeah, exactly. At the, exactly. At, right. Yeah. So that's why I mean, there's, there's a lot of stuff in there. And I think we, we should we, we should kind of uh, uh, finish it up here with that. Um, I mean, always go in with a higher rate like always try to get the highest base rate that you possibly can because yeah pay increases are going to be like what two percent uh, or something ridiculous mm. like that so um don't skimp on that try to get the higher the higher the higher rate but in terms of contracts right i mean it's 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 a given that and it, this is not a necessarily like a talk about contracts um because we're also not legal professionals or anything but like never start without one. That's the number one rule. And and, and I'm the number one person who's started many jobs uh, yeah, without that's not one. Good, right? So it gets you I, in in. And it screwed exactly, me. It screwed exactly. me many times. And um, I mean, I you probably are smarter than me <laughs> when it comes to this but stuff. But on the other hand, right? Like, don't I mean? Um, it's it's hard to argue against big contracts sent by huge companies. Um, um, even if they read the contract, read the contract. If you're really not sure, get an accountant to look over it. Right? It's not expensive compared. Like, okay, it, if it's if it's well, a, a lawyer, a lawyer you, right? You a, lawyer. a lawyer. Sorry, okay. if you have a thousand dollar contract and the lawyer going to cost you five hundred to look over it, doesn't make sense, right? But if you have a multi-month right. fifty, sixty, seventy thousand dollar contract, yes, it's going to be worth it to pay the lawyer five hundred bucks to look over it, for sure, right? So that's what you need to do anyway. Um, but now I completely lost what I was, what I was going to well, say no, to as, also as a, <laughs> as a, as a, as a freelancer though, yeah. uh, you know, you need to have like a, a good work for hire contract. Yeah. Just, you know, you need to draft one up. That's sort of the one that you'll have. Right. I mean, like I, we all have some, some kind of work for hire <laughs> contract just in case the place that hires you. And I've had yeah. many of these places say, well, okay, you want to, you send over a yeah, contract. Yeah. No, cl it, 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 like uh, for sure, like uh, independent little studios, they for sure don't, don't have one. Right. It's not like everybody's Disney and can, can, um, will send you their you stuff. Know, right. By and large, the contracts though, they're not, they, they don't want to screw you no, over. No, no. They're, they're not oh. trying any of that, but but sometimes you have to look yeah, at yeah. it because they, they you say, should always oh, read it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, because a lot of times just make sure like, you know, OK, the, the job is net, you know, 60. Yeah, yeah, know, exactly. And, Meaning and, and that, what that means yeah. is after your job's completed, the, it'll take 60 days before they'll pay after you. the invoicing, and, after the date of the invoice, after the yeah. end of yeah, after the invoicing. And you should invoice the day you're oh, done. Yeah. But and please uh, have a really so nice professional days. looking invoice please yeah you're a designer <laughs> you're a designer don't have yeah. some excel crap yeah. there please yes and and so the, the thing is just remember if you got to pay rent with this uh. check you net 60 is not going to work nope. for you or at least you need to factor that exactly, in exactly right because some contracts are net 15 yeah Net 30, exactly. net 60. And you can renegotiate oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. that, right? You can say, no, 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 I don't want net 60. I've yeah, done yeah. that before. I'm like, I'm doing yeah. net 60. 
net 30 is the don't, max don't be afraid, and, and yeah. anything over that you're going to be charged a certain yeah. per, you know interest don't rate. be afraid to ask and, for for amendments to the contract right they're always exactly I mean, because the, the art director maybe like the the, the most likely the person who sends it to you is going to be like HR or whatever. They also haven't really read the contract because it's the lawyer's job in the company. Honestly, right? <laughs> they don't know. It's like, oh, really? Okay, sure. Like, let me let me change that. And then it's done, right? Like, like be, be mindful of who you're talking to, right? If, if even the art director sends you the contract, right? For sure, they haven't read it. For sure, they haven't read it. They don't know what's in there, right? So um, got to be nice and respectful and ask. Um, Right, and that's it. Uh, do you have anything else to add? I think we should wrap this up. Um, do you have any other? Yeah. How long have we been going long? here? One and a half hours. Bloody hell. Um, <laughs> Goodness. But I think we. But I, I, I think this is an important oh, one yeah. because I think a lot of people, a lot of, they, they're just wondering, you know, what's, what's some of the best strategies. I think we kind of outlined, yeah, you know, so. the things that we do. Uh, I mean, I, I, I mean, I'm looking at my whole list. Oh, the other thing is for me, international clients international freelance clients and there's going to be a lot more of those coming in the future because everybody's working from mm. home uh and that could be you know but for me personally when i work with international clients i got screwed once so i always ask for half ah 50 up front okay that's a good 50 percent off and i uh, and my contract there's a pay schedule right 50 percent to start and then uh depending on how big the project is i might have an intermediate mm -hmm. um a wire transfer right. to continue and then uh and then the end and then i i don't uh i always say once i receive the full amount then i will release the image exactly. in full resolution exactly. yeah that makes sense just so people know because you might think ah no it's okay you know i've been screwed by big places oh it's okay. not it's not that they you know they they just don't you don't you don't fall under their jurisdiction let's say in somewhere in it's the hard international to pursue, right? exactly you can't pursue it so uh for your own safety and sanity make sure it's all in contract and and in the end don't release the image until you know i mean it sounds like it's a very because i've had it mm -hmm. where the job's like oh we, we need a presentation today and say, well yeah exactly the money. and and don't and um what was i going to say like don't be now I, I lost it again. I'm completely out of out of brain juice right now. Um, no, when you said like, um, like don't don't be bullied into this and um, by those companies. A lot of them will bully. Yeah, right? yeah. and um, I mean they they'll just you know I've I've been bullied and and if you say okay and you do that you'll never hear but, from them again. Maybe the important part is though that you need to agree to this in writing in the contract you cannot you, yeah before all you this. cannot jump yeah. on them and say like like just just when but just about when 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 the project is due is like oh no i'm not going to send you the full res you pay me first right this cannot come out of the blue it has to be no no it has to be exactly, all written in the exactly. contract exactly so yes that's, that's good. and and like like jan said before if in doubt go hire a lawyer to write your contract exactly. Uh, if you know, like this is money well spent, especially for people who are uh, more experienced and you're garnering mm -hmm. a bigger wage or maybe right. a longer project, yeah. just make sure because you know these things. And um, one one last thing is like again, stand your ground. I think with this, um, there are there there are cases that I've experienced where they say like, oh, here's the contract, and it's like a Friday evening, right? Like try try to get a lawyer on a Friday evening to look over this thing to sign to 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 then forward it. It's not going to happen, right? They're all they're they're going to tell you like, oh yeah, I look over it on Monday morning, right? But on the other end, the HR is like, like we want to start Monday morning. Can you like send it to me over oh, now, right? Oh, yeah, I just had that happen. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it's like stand your ground with this. Stand your ground, right? Just say like, sorry, I really cannot do this. Um, even some companies will take offense. Some companies will like, why why, why do you need a lawyer? Like we're not trying to do anything dodgy, right? Like, they don't. They don't understand. Yeah, but that. the problem is, yeah, I think a lot of companies just remember uh, when you do a negotiating, it tells a lot about you as a mm -hmm. person. It also tells a lot about the company. Right. Exactly. And exactly. sometimes you have to ask yourself if a company keeps pushing you and pushing you and pushing you and not they're not reasonable yeah. maybe it's not a company you really want to work because for. Because mo in most cases, um, you will see that this kind of attitude goes through all areas if they're pushy when it comes to the contract right. stuff 
they will be pushy in the art reviews. Um, you can you can kind of imagine. Or your personal review. <laughs> exactly right. You know, no raise for yeah, you. Exactly, sorry, exactly. you know. I mean, so um, be mindful of that. Oh, so I mean, we should definitely talk about the fact that uh, getting higher rates. You know, like how if you are in house, how do you get a higher rate if every year is just a you know, inflation sort of percentage. I mean, it's, you know. it's really almost, I, I, I'd say it's almost impossible um, to, to get much more well, than you have, you have uh, initially negotiated. Um, the only way is really that you have to jump uh, to different companies um, and, and try to get bigger positions. And then it can even be that you jump from company A to company B, do there a year or two, and then <laughs> jump Go back, to back in a senior position. And then you can then you can negotiate a really a, a lot higher pay. Um, and yeah. again, that's not necessarily most people don't realize yeah. that, you know, they, they think, well, you know, I'm there. I go to a senior yeah. role. I mean, no, it, your rate is very incremental. Exactly. Junk. And I mean, you don't, yeah. you don't need to be you, you don't need to be a, a, a bitch about it. Right. You, you can be it can be done in a respectful <laughs> way. Right. It's like a lot of times they say like, oh, but you're not really uh, like aligned with a company and, and you're like you're just going to be here for like a few months and then you're going to jump ship again just to negotiate a higher rate. And um, I mean, there, there is some of that, but I think most companies are quite respectful and they understand that this is just how, how, how the way how it works. Right. Um, I mean, and also don't don't jump company every few months. That doesn't make any sense. Like you need to I think yeah, you I need know. to spend at least uh, like a year or two um, at a company. Um, to because for the union, I'll say that uh, if you get on a film, like I said, you know, on a low rate, uh, and that's my advice for anybody starting the union is, you know, they'll say, okay, well, in order for you to be in the union, we're, we, you know, we have to, you know, work our magic, and but you, you know, you're gonna need, you're gonna have a low rate, mm -hmm. you know, and you know, let's say your rate is 500 a day now, at, you know, you came in and you're 500. You know how long it's going to take you to get to, let's say, 800 years, literally years, because every film they're going to ask you, well, what did you make on your last film? Which is really not exactly. legal, by yeah. the way. But but at but the same time, you're kind of at the whim yeah. because if you don't tell them, then they won't even hire you. They'll just give you whatever they give you. But so they'll ask you what what did you wake on your last film and you say 500 they say well we're not giving raises that happened to me over mm -hmm. and over i mean the only time that only reason why i got a raise was because um i got lucky uh because basically on that show they really needed someone and they didn't care <laughs> <laughs> so as soon as you you made that it's jump like, yes now the next exactly. film you can say yeah but that took three years yeah. so i didn't get a raise for three yeah, years that can happen, yeah. So just be mindful of, you know, like jumping companies, mm. you know, what Jan was saying, because I, that's really the only way I mm. found. I only got one really good raise once um, when I was working at a VFX place and I've been there for like four yeah. years. And, and because I said, I'm leaving if you don't give me this <laughs> because I'm, I'm, I'm completely underpaid. Yeah. I, 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 and I'm the supervisor. <laughs> but that, yeah. that, that tells you I started off like a junior map mm. painter. And then, you know, I was a supervisor, you know, many years later and I was getting paid marginally more. And I was like, come on, this doesn't make any sense. Right. So, you know, so that's that's a that's a big one, uh, you know, be, being able to walk away. Exactly. That's you know? always something. OK, but just just be true to yourself, right. uh, you know, confident, not arrogant and be a, just be a good guy. Exactly. Or girl. That's the that's the main just, thing. That's the main thing. Right. And yeah. all of this. Well, I think that perfectly rounds out this episode. We've gone way longer than we anticipated this to last. But I hope you got a lot out of it. And uh, thanks so much for tuning in. And we'll see you in the next one. Thank you. Thanks. See you Bye. next